All right, everybody, I am out in my bike shed, leaned up against my iron head, wearing a shovel head shirt. And for the purposes of this episode, this shirt matters more than this bike does. I'm gonna go buy a shovel head in the morning, I hope, assuming the deal goes through. So that's all I'm gonna say about it. I'm jacked. I've wanted a shovel head forever, and I'm really excited about this. So let's go on an adventure. Oh, it's the next morning. It's Tuesday, the day I'm going to go look at this bike, letting the truck warm up. Got a nice cup of coffee in my Pikachu mug, and then, uh, got a big envelope of cash, and uh, just in case, Smith & Wesson J-Frame that generally follows me everywhere I go. And yeah. I'm gonna go to the big shop. We got a little bit of work to do this morning. This guy can't meet up till about 12 today, and he lives about two hours away from where my shop's at. So it's like 7.15 right now. I'm gonna go drive to the big shop and get a little bit of work done for an hour or two. Then uh, we'll put the trailer on the back of the truck, and Chris is gonna come with me, my business partner. And we're gonna drive to the other side of the state, and hopefully uh, next time you see me we'll be loading a shovel head up on the back of the trailer. Okay, let's go do this thing. Six hours later. Okay, so we're back at the shop with it. And, uh, here it is. I didn't really record very much while we were getting the bike. I didn't record at all while we were getting the bike. But, I'm going to get this thing off the trailer and getting inside. It's slowly starting to rain, and probably tomorrow morning I'll take it back out. Peel this band-aid off. And uh, I'll probably take it back outside tomorrow. We'll do a walk around and check it out a little more in depth. But it's my new shovel head. Really do about have it. There you go. Oh, it's the next day and um, I didn't really get any of this on camera yesterday but Chris went and rode this bike and he came back he's like man it doesn't seem like it's running right you want to ride it so I jumped on it and every time you gave it throttle it would it spit and sputter and die and then it just finally wouldn't run at all and uh, then we realized it was out of gas so we walked up to the shop and grabbed the gas can and rode doubles on a CRF 70 down the driveway that might have been some good YouTube if I had recorded it and filled this thing up with gas but there was there was just enough gas in it to get it back up here into the shop so this is where it sits I got a gas can in the truck and um, I think I'm gonna put some gas in it and put it outside so it's a little bit of a cleaner backdrop and maybe a little bit better light um, it's kind of gloomy and overcast and very gently drizzling right now but I still think it'd be be better to do this outside so let's grab the gas can out of the truck and we'll bring the 
bring the bike out here and talk about it. Okay, so here we are outside with it. We can get a better look at it. And yeah, um, I do have the battery box cover for this thing. Like I said, this is the cheapest Sportster, not Sportster, Sportsters are always in my head. This is the cheapest shovel head I could find on Facebook Marketplace within like, you know, two or three hours of me. And I've kind of been looking for about a month. And what exactly is this? Well, this is kind of a Frankenstein, honestly. This bike is titled on a South Carolina custom construction title. And let me just kind of show you. The frame, that's not a Harley number that's been ground off. It's where a South Carolina custom construction tag used to be glued. It's very hard to make it out, but S, C, and then the rest of the numbers. And those numbers match this number, which has been engraved into the um, pad on the engine case. And both of those numbers match what is on the title. And then if we come over here to where your other engine number should be underneath that black wrinkle coat, I started scraping some of that off. There's nothing there. So the story goes, the guy that I got this from built this with his father when this guy was 13 years old. And they built it from a conglomeration of old Harley parts. And I guess none of this had a title. Or if it did, the titles were lost probably at some point in time. And so evidently they knew someone at the DMV and applied for a custom manufacturer title. And that title was issued to them in 1996 and then transferred to the guy that I bought this bike from, from his father when his father passed in 2019 or 2020, I think it was. So this is titled, it's titled really strange, which is probably part of why it was cheap. And as y'all can see, this thing's kind of crusty. Uh, and now might be a good time to just go ahead and tell you, I paid $4,800 for this bike. Uh, pretty much every other shovel head that, that had any title at all that you could ride and that would run around here, they're in like the $55 to $6,500 range with many of them guys asking seven or eight for them. I did see a 79 FXS lowrider for sale for 4500 bucks. It was purple. It looked like it got pulled out of a barn. It had a lot of patina on it. It was pretty crusty. This thing's crusty too. But um, I wasn't able to make it in time to get that bike. So I've been told that the frame is from a 74 FLH. And I don't really know enough about it to to know whether that's true or not. From my understanding, an FX and an FL bike all use the same frame in these years. And the differences really are in the front end. And obviously this has a low rider FXS front end um, off of, you know, 78, 79, 80, etc. And so for all intents and purposes, this really just looks like it's a you know, to the naked eye, it looks like a 78 or 79 FXS. Um, I was told that this engine had been rebuilt sometime in like 2010. Um, the guy says that it has 30 or 60 over pistons in it. I asked him, is it 74 or 80 cubic inches? How many cubic inches? He says he doesn't know. It's a lot of things that sound like he just doesn't know. It has 10 fins per cylinder, so maybe it's a 74 cubic inch engine. He was saying it has pop-up pistons and high compression this and that or the other, and it runs good, and he used to bust Corvette's ass with it back in the day, and I don't believe any of that. Um, cylinder heads, 0766. 0566. Um, I'm guessing this is just really a stock 74 inch shovel, cone shovel, obviously. And it runs. Um, you're not going to bust any Corvette's ass with this thing. My iron head would smoke this thing. And let's just walk around it a little bit more. Um, it has some kind of forward controls on it with this homemade fabricated bullshit. This is going to go for two reasons. One, this is ugly as shit. Two, and I think this might require some work back here, but there is a lot. I'm not changing gears. There's a ton of slack right here. Um, 
in all of this makes it really hard to catch second gear especially and with these being so far forward and so high and with me being such a short person especially a short guy who's used to riding mids those are really awkward for me i feel like i have little control over the bike and like i'm sitting like uh at an obgyn's office um skull derby plate is gonna go this natural light starter solenoid cover it's cheesy as crap he told me the bike only runs on beer it'll if you don't don't if you ain't drinking beer when you're riding this bike it'll break down on you so whatever um it still has the spark plug holder which i think is a really whoopsies really neat little thing We'll grab that nut later. Actually, let's grab it now so we don't forget it because that's totally something that I would do. Leave it there laying in the gravel. Forget about it. Never to be seen again. Um, my gut reaction is to take this off. I generally don't like backrests on bikes and to take this plate off with it. But I don't know. This kind of has a cool old school patina to it that maybe I might actually leave this. Um, I need to put the right battery in it. This is a battery I robbed out of my Red Sportster just to get the bike running. So the guy didn't have a battery for it. It's an SNS carburetor. Um, it's a Super E. I'm trying to see if you guys can. There you go. You can kind of see it in there. Seems like it runs decent enough. I believe it's too rich right now to pop, pop, puff. Excuse me, I can't talk. Puffs a little black smoke out of the pipes. And then same thing on this side, forwards that are too far forward and too high for me. Um, looks like we have a, a mounting tab here, maybe for some mids, but the pipe is in the way. So I might just live with this for now and try and relocate or redo this. Obviously, little cheesy shit like these skulls on the pushrod tubes and the skulls on the rockers and all that, but that's going to go and get rid of this too i just don't really like that kind of stuff um what i do like is this i like this little pewter naked chick i like titties a lot more than i like skulls um i like titties more than i like titties more than i like beer and then there's just some general tidying to do some of these wires are hanging loose and got some wires wrapped up here um you know, this clutch cable's maybe too long and not secured. Um, the risers for the handlebars are loose, no big deal. I have extra riser bushings and I could probably just keep riding these if I just tighten the bolts up. And it is missing a bolt right here in the stem. But other than that, I mean, this is a complete running, rideable shovel head for less than five grand. Obviously, it needs some TLC. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this. I've wanted a shovel head forever. Let's start this thing up. I kind of want to kick it. I kicked it over yesterday and that was really satisfying, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to kickstart a cold bike. I'll probably just electric start it for you. So what am I going to do with this thing? Well, I'm probably going to end up keeping it, which means I'm probably going to sell that red sports shirt I just bought, which is fine. Part of why I started sort of this motorcycle business as like a side gig is just to have a revolving door of old bikes that basically just pay for themselves and make a little bit of extra money uh, along the way, which I've already done. Um, I'm not going to cut this thing up. I'm not going to make it into a chopper or anything. I'm pretty much just going to leave it the way it is. I'll probably change the bars. I'm not crazy about the handlebars. Um, I'll tidy up the wiring, just do some general maintenance on it, get it running better, uh, make sure the brakes are up to snuff. 
Um, those tires look good, but I think they're pretty old. I hadn't checked the date stamp on them yet. And yeah, just make it, you know, as reliable as a shovel head can be. Um, but that's it. This episode has gone on long enough. Stay tuned. Hope you guys are excited about this as I am. Thanks for watching.